In last week's episode, we talked about the ethics of watching or not watching leaked media. Let's see what you had to say. Purple Desperado on the subreddit talks about the relationship between leaks and video games or video game content, which is something that I didn't mention at all in last week's video. And especially in relationship to Super Smash Brothers, this makes me wonder about the severity of leaks or the perceived severity of leaks. Um, it, for different audiences of different types of media. Like, is there something about video game leaks that is that make them more egregious or more severe because of either the cost uh, associated with buying a game or the amount of time uh, video game players spend with their games, that having these things leaked seems like a, a greater transgression in some way. I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of putting this thought together as I'm saying it, I'd be interested to know. What do you think? Brent Z and a bunch of other people pointed out that we might have leaks to thank for the creation of certain pieces of media that we're very excited about, specifically in this case, the Deadpool movie. And I want to maybe believe that this is true, that a major Hollywood studio would be totally on board with making a movie that they were not otherwise going to make after some test footage got got leaked and everybody got really excited. And they were like, oh, people are excited about this. There's a market for it. So yeah, okay, definitely. Let's actually make it. But I, I really don't buy it. Uh, I Maybe I am just, maybe my cold robot heart is just not, not feeling it. But I don't know. I'm skeptical. Friend of the show, Professor Puppet, likens uh, watching leaked media to sort of peeking into your Christmas presents before uh, Christmas morning. And um, I, I kind of feel this, and I, I also really feel this uh, description of looking at low quality leaks of things like photos from the Star Wars set and getting uh, like a little bit of excitement or a small amount of insight and joy from this thing, but then feeling like you're borrowing happiness from later, that if you were to not experience those things, you would have saved that excitement, just a little bit of it, for the full high quality release where you can then be just overjoyed and overexcited in this, in this really, um, in this really sort of effusive way. So yeah, just, I feel ya, I feel ya, Professor Puppet. Firewood Sparkler talks about the interesting and weird functional distinction between leaks and spoilers. And this is a relationship that we sort of danced around in last week's video, but didn't really make explicit. Um, specifically, they talk about how they will avoid leaks like the plague, but are a total sucker for spoilers. And I wonder what the relationship is here that, you know, when something gets leaked, it is more of an event. And I wonder whether or not the sort of uh, eventizing of it, the, the fact that it's made a big deal, uh, it, has something to do with uh, our uh, individual predilections to consume leaks or not consume leaks. Whereas spoilers, there's it's kind of just a um, low level understanding between people in a community that, you know, spoilers are okay, spoilers are not okay. You ask people before or you don't. Uh, and yeah, I would, be, I would be curious to know what people think about the relationship between leaks and spoilers or leaks as spoilers. Mr. Apolulo and a ton of other people suggest that leaks really are nothing more than a PR stunt, that studios and creators are behind the whole thing just to make sure that the stuff that they're making gets, you know, on the news in the eyes of consumers. And I am willing to accept that a small percentage of them are, but I also think having recently worked with, you know, some musicians who are gonna be releasing records in the next couple years, seeing the lengths that a lot of them go to to destroy CDs or digital files or recordings of what happens in the studio, I would hazard a guess that it is not the marketing plan of most creators or most producers or most distribution companies to leak their things on purpose. Because I mean, you know, and also once everything is just always being leaked, that's just, that's just releasing things, right? I think. Prathamesh, while recording next week's episode, my Fitbit actually told me that I had hit my step goal and my feet had not moved at all. So I, I don't know exactly how many, but definitely some. Satoshi Nakamoto brings up the fact that there are a lot of male memes on Idea Channel, uh, meaning that the assets that we use depict a lot of men and uh, uh, gets actually kind of given a hard time for pointing this out. And I just want to emphasize that this is a thing that uh, me and the rest of the Idea Channel staff try to be really cognizant of, try to make sure that 
there is at least some diversity in the assets that we show on Idea Channel because it is important to us. And we run into a lot of problems with this, uh, not the least of them being the fact that, you know, uh, for me, white, white dude codes as normal. And also the fact that, uh, as it turns out, the sources that we find most of our animated GIFs, there is a relative lack of diversity of women and people of color on places like Giphy and, you know, in the first couple pages of the YouTube image, uh, sorry, the Google image search for animated GIFs. So, I mean, that's that's no excuse. Uh, you know, it should just mean that we spend more time trying to find more diverse assets. But uh, I just wanted to respond to this because this is a thing that we do think about. We're not great at it, but we do consider it, so thank you for pointing it out. I think it was somewhere around 2,000 people. Uh, folks on the subreddit seemed to get it almost immediately. I think the five people who wrote comments were very confused, as they should have been. We just wanted to experiment a little on y'all, I guess. <laughs> All throughout the comments on last week's video, there were great takes on the economic aspects of uh, watching or not watching leaked media. Uh, for instance, FuzzMonkey talks about how if you are uh, watching leaked media, then you are stealing because you are not giving money to the people who are making the things that you are invested in. You're sort of taking a different route and that that in doesn't incentivize them to create more. Whereas um, Aldrich talks about how people who watch leaks are maybe the types of people who are more likely to spend money on these things that they're excited about anyways that if you're watching a leak you're probably excited and so you're probably gonna invest as soon as you can uh, whereas Sean Penny talks about how you can see some sort of justification for watching or consuming leaked media based upon an amount of money that you've already spent and the example that they use is Game of Thrones that if you have paid for HBO have you somehow paid already for the experience of an entire season of Game of Thrones. That feels like a stretch to me, but to see it explained, I'm like, May but maybe I have, but maybe I have. This makes me, this does make me want for some research or something about the, the economic effects of leaks and whether or not you know, if, if someone watches a leak, are they more likely to spend money later? I understand feeling that way, but I'd be curious to know if it's true. Davina Harlow and a ton of other people talk about how if you live in certain parts of the world, seems like Australia is one of those parts, like whoa, you kind of have no choice but to watch things that have been leaked in some way. And this is where we get to a fine line between leak and piracy that if there is a TV show that is going to be released in Australia six months after it is released in the United States, someone in the United States records it and uploads it to the internet where someone in Australia can then download it, is that a leak or is that piracy? Does it matter? Either way, I feel you. That is sounds like it is terrible. I agree, round of applause for Ben. Really an underappreciated member of the Idea Channel team. That's not true, we constantly tell him that he's a genius. Ben, you're a genius. <laughs> Tessa Mitterhoff and Samantha Ramirez both write great comments about the relationship this idea has to Broadway theater, that you know there are economic reasons that a lot of people cannot go and see uh, corporate uh, Broadway theater because it's so expensive, and so there's this question of whether or not watching video, uh, watching leaks or bootlegs is in some way forgivable because you wanna be you know, up to date with your industry. And uh, yeah, these are, this is a, a point of view about this that I had never considered. So uh, check out these comments, link to these ones and all of the others in the doobie doo. Darth Toad, this list exists on, on my phone, on my Trello. Um, it's not short. It's a not a short, there I got to the end. It's not a short list. Someday they will be made. Lois, it is mostly lots of hand waving and shouting about weird music uh, while drinking coffee in and around Brooklyn. It's okay, it's just all right.